Hello, I am Enrique Villarreal, and I want to be talking about the role of religion and fate with the works of Gilgamesh and Sakuntala, with the main argument being that while in Sakuntala and Gilgamesh, the actions made by the protagonists may have been their own, in the grand scheme of things, their divine destiny was already predetermined. Uh, a little of context, both uh, stories were written many millennia ago in Gilgamesh, the Mesopotamian religion was polytheistic with many gods, which can be seen similar to the Roman and Greek gods, where the gods were really heavily personified with having uh, fights between them, holding grudges, having mortal guides, which they favor sometimes or try to kill. And with in Shakuntala, in Hindu, Hindu, they have this monotheistic religion with many deities, and it's heavily based on Dharma and Karma, and that there are always in nature bigger and stronger forces out there that you use cannot control and so sometimes in in life there are inexplicable and illogical things that happen to us and we always try to find a meaning or an explanation to why that happened and sometimes we can't but we still try and that's um, this can be seen in these two stories that one example when Enkidu was created and Kido was a man who came from the woods and no one has seen him before. And they tried to make this as an explanation that Gilgamesh was a really tyr tyrannical ruler and the people were living in agony and they pleaded to the gods for somebody to help them. And in the story, in page 14, it's the god of creation, Aruru, who he said, and I quote, that he created Enkidu to let them contend together and leave Uruk in quiet. So it's this a way that to explain maybe later that Uruk became a better place and it's an explanation that Enkidu was created by the gods. Uh, another um, part of the story too in Gilgamesh was when the Bull of Heaven was sent towards uh, Enkidu and Gilgamesh. In the city of Uruk, a big bull came out of nowhere from the woods, which no one had seen before. And a way to explain this was said that it was the gods by trying to punish um, Gilgamesh by pushing Ishtar away when Ishtar tried to romant rom romanticize Gilgamesh and he did, did not want that uh, they sent the bull of heaven towards them as a way of punishment when Ishtar demanded to her father and I quote my father give me the bull of heaven to destroy Gilgamesh end quote uh, lastly in the story of Gilgamesh uh, when Enkidu got sick and he died uh, and in those times they could not explain sickness so they try to say that after they defeated the Bull of Heaven, Enkidu had a dream where he saw the gods taking counsel and the, decreeing that as they killed the Bull of Heaven and Kumbaba, one of them two must die. And it was the hero en Enlil who uh, decreed that Enkidu must die. And when the god Shamash said that, he, he asked Enlil that, uh, and I quote, Enkidu must die although he's innocent. Uh, so they were trying to say that Enkidu was a good person and he got sick and he died. But a way to explain this illogical thing, it was because the gods, it, it was because the gods decreed this um, pu punishment towards um, Enkidu and Gilgamesh as a way for overstepping their power and because of that. Uh, also in the story of Shakuntala, we can see this as a way that when uh, Shakuntala came back after she met the king and the king left and he she had the ring but when she went back to visit the king and lost the ring the king did not remember her as a way to not only say that the king did not remember, remember Shakuntala they said that while the king was away Shakuntala had to meet with the sage of Durvasas but she was thinking about the king and because she was deeply in love the sage uh, she put the curse on Shakuntala and I quote she said since you blindly ignore a great sage like me the lover you worship with mindless devotion would not remember you wait quote so this is a way to say that as the king did not remember Shakuntala it's not the king's fault if not it is Shakuntala's fault for not doing what the sage Durvasas um, wanted her to do and um, this can be said that it's just a way to explain the unexplicable. And lastly, in the story, in Shakuntala, we can see, we can see that destiny, it doesn't matter the choices. Like, the, the choices you do are your own, but in this grand scheme of things, they don't matter because you're just, your destiny is predetermined. 
the king was in Act Seven later on, like late in the story. The king was alone in his castle and he missed Shakuntala. But then the god Indra had this out of nowhere fights uh, fight war with the demons, and she at, she asked the king to come with her. And after they won the war, the king went back through uh, the the forest of the gods and where he was praying to the god of to the parents of the god of Indra. She, he had this miraculous meeting with his son uh, and that's when he finally got to meet up with Sakuntala again. So you can say that everything that happened before was just, it's the individual choices that they, the, in the protagonist made, but it was the actions of the gods or their game to kind of distract themselves and just make the people, us, suffer a little bit. But at the end, we will always get to where we have to get. And all in all, we can say that these two stories are fictional, with fictional characters, although they have some true historical facts in them. We can say that uh, these are fictional characters, but we can also see this, that divinity is a way for us to explain the um, events happening around us which have no scientific or logical explanation. Uh, And it can also be seen as a way that the writer who writes these stories is also the divine character as uh, he or she has the power of a god by saying that the characters that you read in the story might be having their own individual actions. At the end, the writer already has a story in his or her mind with an ending in their mind. And in the end, there is nothing you can do to really change that. And it's... um, up to you to kind of find a way to explain what's happening but you just have to kind of live your life and just see where it takes you at the end and I found this interesting quote which uh it's been said by many people so I don't really know from who to um who to quote but it's the if you cannot change your fate change your attitude so I recommend to many people to See this as a way to you try to live the best of your life and all the things that are happening around you, try to make the best you can. And just don't be worried about the outcome because the outcome will come itself. And as long as you try your best, good things will come, hopefully. And thank you. Have a good day.